the uh, General Electric P865 AM FM portable transistor radio, battery operated. This was made in 1962, and it was GE's first AM FM radio, uh, AM FM transistor radio. Uh, it was uh, all American made, and it tips the scales at just over 10 pounds. Real heavy duty radio, all die cast front. This whole front frame is die cast metal with chrome plating and uh, with a plastic back. These were a wonderful radio and uh, a tribute to the manufacturing quality that went into these things. This has all its original parts. All the capacitor is original. Every part in it is original. Nothing's ever been changed. And the fact that it has FM is amazing. And it still works. Uh, the reason that you don't see a lot of FM radios from back then is the fact that our whole broadcasting system was based on AM and uh, FM was kind of the new kid in town even in the 60s. I wouldn't get my first regular AM listening radio until 1968. There was no need for it. A bunch of years ago, in Los but, uh, but this one here was a very expensive radio when it was new. Um, and it's sensitive, town, selective, you know, it's just everything you'd want in a radio, except that it's huge. Um, we have to look at the inside of this thing. As I say, it's a, got a spotty volume control. It's a little bit, it's not, I haven't even cleaned it yet. But on the inside is where it's impressive. And that's gonna, the camera's going to move a little bit for a minute while I get this thing so we can see it. But you look at this thing. This is an interesting part of this thing. This bar, where's my, this bar here that goes all the way th across the circuit board, that's the AM FM switch. And it switches a, a group of little boards right there. See around the other side, this little group of boards right here. And it switches those switches back and forth to switch between AM and FM. Pretty amazing. Now, the other reason we didn't have AM, FM radios and transistor portables back then was the availability of transistors that would handle RF or the, the uh, high frequencies involved with FM, like your 10.7 megacycle IF. But it was Philco that made the transistors for this thing. Philco had a way of doing it. They made their own transistors. This was before Ford took them over. But uh, see, there's a Philco transistor right here. And uh, the, the, their work in high frequency uh, transistors, uh, germanium transistors that work in the high frequency range enabled them to make the first all transistor portable television, the Philco Safari. So manufacturers bought the transistors from Philco so they could make AM FM radios. Interestingly enough, RCA did not make an AM FM transistor radio until probably three years after this one was made. And even at that, they had it imported from Germany. It was made by Nordmendig. And uh, as far as uh, an American-made transistor, RCA never made an American-made transistor portable battery-operated radio. But uh, GE did. And GE stayed American for quite a while. You have a whole potpourri of uh, transistor manufacturers here. This top hat design, that was pure GE. Uh, over here you have Raytheon. And of course the RF transistors are Philco. But uh, there's not an RCA part in this entire set. But look at the ferrite bar in this thing. Holy mackerel, an 8-inch ferrite bar with a 5-8-inch diameter core. No wonder this thing can pick up Mars, just about. But anyway, so that's the GE uh, Super. I call it the original Super Radio because indeed it was. And this is the P865 GE Radio and a wonderful set.